You just want to have fun, guys. And you know, this is not for you. This is not for you. This is not for you. This is for the video? competitive players who want to make all the right decisions from the beginning of the game to the end of the game. Hey, guys! Welcome back to another Star Wars Galaxy Heroes video. It's your man Zuko, and I'm Axel, and this is the High Ground. All right, guys. So today we're going to be doing an interesting type of video. You know, we've been playing now this game for about a year, so we haven't been playing very long. We feel like we can connect to a lot of the newer players in this game. So we decided to come out with our own beginner guides. Now, when we first started playing this game, it was really important to us that, you know, we searched up on YouTube all these different guys that made videos about how to start the game, but as time has gone on, those have become obsolete. You know, they don't really make a lot of sense anymore, but we thought that because of our unique, you know, experience only playing this game for a year, we could provide a little bit better insight to all you, you know, you beginner players. Yeah, we've grown so much in just a year. We're nearly a six-star GK. We have all the legendary characters done, and it's because we strategically attacked the game. Like, we, in a year that we've been playing, we're actually top 20 of our arena, as mostly for your play characters, yeah. because we allocate our resources correctly. We've made mistakes, which is what we're, we're hoping to help to you guys not you make. Guys, yeah. Exactly. So, you know, we're excited to share this. What we've done is we got a little bit of a Q&A going on today. We have, we both have a couple friends that are brand new to this game. They've been playing for about two weeks. And they, what they did is they sent us a whole bunch of questions that they had. And we've selected the ones that we think are, you know, the best to talk about to hopefully help you guys out. So this is going to be a, a, a short list, about 10 questions that we're going to answer for you guys. Yeah. So number one, where to spend my gems? This is an easy answer. <laughs> you spend your gems on energy refreshes, especially at the beginning of the game. The most important thing you want to do is level up as quickly as possible and get all those achievements done and just get to level 85 as quickly as you can because the higher you get in the game, the more things are unlocked. Exactly. And the more things you unlock, the more things you can get to make yourself a better player in the game. Yeah, you know, as a free-to-play player, it's going to take time. You know, you're going to be in the thousands of arena only getting, like, what is it, 40 crystals, 60 crystals per refresh. Like, so it's going to be rough for you to be able to refresh as many times as you might want to. I know it was tough for us. It's going to take you about... Let's say approximately 45 months to get up to like level 80. Oh yeah. So it takes a lot of time, you know, it does, but that is definitely the best advice. Every I'm sure all the other YouTubers tell you the exact same thing. Definitely spend your crystals on energy refreshes. Guys, how many times did we buy uh, chromium packs? Oh, yes. And we just we wasted so many crystals on that when we could be progressing so much further in the game with 320 crystals worth of refreshes. It's very tempting. And he's telling you this as a very lucky Chromium pack purchaser. Yeah. He was able to get Bays and Darth Shrew, Maul, Darth Maul. Through, through Chromium packs. So he was very lucky in the game. I did not have that luck. <laughs> but it's still not good. Like, you it, need yeah. to be using your crystals towards energy refreshes. 100%. Do not spend it on anything else. Number two, how to use Cantina energy. Um, so in Cantina energy, at the beginning of the game, you're very limited on where you can use it. Late in game, you can kind of choose where you want to put it. But in the beginning of the game, what you should be using your Cantina energy for is uh, farming characters. So we have a list between the first three levels, I guess, in Cantina. Yeah. So we have number one character you should farm in Cantina, Hera. Hera Syndulla. Number two character you should farm in Cantina, Ezra Bridger. Number three character you should farm in Cantina, Old Ben, Obi-Wan Kenobi. So, all right, guys. So what we've decided in structuring this list of who to farm um, I would tell you as, as free-to-play players, I mean, it's important to get at least your first character up to seven stars because it helps you get into the shard shop quicker. Yes. So, guys, Hera and Ezra are hugely important in this game right now, especially for beginner characters. We are huge for Phoenix for you guys. We feel like that is the way you should go. I know it might not be exciting to a lot of you guys who don't watch Rebels or anything like the, the TV show, but... Guys, they're definitely the best faction for to be a free to play game. player. Yes. I mean, they're con one of the biggest things you know that they tell you, you should have, especially for like Galactic War, getting to Galactic War is, is healers. You know, you need those people in Squad Arena when you're low levels. You need survivability. You need survivability. These guys, that's what they provide. Their team, based with Hera's leadership, I mean, it's extremely difficult to kill kill them if you don't have a certain team that's strong enough to do so. And at so beginning they're game, they're amazing in Squad Arena. <laughs> They're amazing for Galactic War, like he said, which is going to be a big hurdle in the beginning of the game. You're going to be like, when can I beat uh, a full Galactic War? Yeah. Um, so they're great for that. They're going to be usable once you get to raids later on in the game. <laughs> Their ships are very important in the game. Mm -hmm. They're just a, an outstanding faction. The first faction you should go to after completely. Okay, so yeah, and Old Ben, guys, going back to, to Cantina. 
Definitely old Ben because he's needed later on in the game. But not just that, he's such a good tank Great right tank. now. He got a new rework. I mean, he is an amazing tank in the game. So he is a fantastic option. And also, old Ben, remember, you're going to need him for CLS. Exactly. So you're also working towards that. You're completing Rebels, which you're going to need in the game. You're getting a great tank, and you're working towards CLS. So that's why he's number three on the list of Cantina uh, characters you should farm. All right, so next question. What free-to-play guys to farm? All right, so this question, um, there's obviously there's a, plenty of stores. You got Squad Arena, Guild Store, you got Cantina, you have Galactic War, you have Fleet. You have a lot of places where you can farm characters. You got the regular light side and dark side nodes. Um, so it's important that you're farming the right guys out of these stores. Okay, like I said, my, my first farm was Luminara and Captain Phasma. My first farm out of Squad Arena, which is even more difficult, was Darth Sidious. And he did, he, I swear to you, ever since I got him to seven stars, he has sat in my lineup. I haven't used him once. He's just not, he's not viable. You know what I'm saying? And especially with how Sith are doing right now, he's not going to be viable. So make sure that you guys are farming the right characters. So what we've done is for Galactic War, we feel this is the order of the characters you should be farming. Zeb, again, he's part of Phoenix. You want to finish is, your Phoenix team first. Exactly. Phoenix is the faction you should have right now. The next is Biggs. Biggs is just a incredible rebel when you pair him with Wedge. And I mean, we're setting you guys up for his ship. Exactly. He has a ship later on in the game as well. I mean, he's just such a good character. Yes. You know what I'm saying? It's still, and it, it might drive a bunch of people nuts, but he is. And then third and fourth, you can kind of interchange. Um, we have Phasma, we have Tebow. Tebow, fantastic for raids. Yeah, so if you're looking towards eventually being good in the raids. The uh, Rancor raid, the specifically. Rancor raid, specifically. Tebow's a great uh, character to farm if you've already finished wet Zeb and Biggs. So. Exactly. Make sure you follow this order. And Phasma's good for later on in the game with First Order. Yes. She's a great First Order leader. Crew, which is Kylo Ren Mast. He's kind of really difficult to farm right now. You can't get him unless you're a pay-to-play player. So for now, she is still the best option for you guys. It'll help you get BB-8 later on in the game. Exactly. As well as unlock mod challenges. Exactly. So just, you know, beneficial. The next door is Squad Arena. Squad Arena... Your first one you should be farming, yes, is Kanan. Kanan yes. is one of the the, the, the Jedi Phoenix and numbers. tank for Phoenix. He needs to be farmed. You need to complete your Phoenix team. Fantastic character. He's in the ships. Just a great overall character. It's going to help you. Phoenix is just, they're so good. We're going to address them later on in this video yeah. as well. They're just too, they, they're amazing. They're a recurring theme here. Exactly. I just want you to know that. So then uh, our next guy is Stormtrooper Han. Stormtrooper Han is still probably one of the best early free-to-play tanks, tanks you can get in the game. Plus... He will be needed later on for CLS. For CLS. And our third character is Another Leia. character who's needed for CLS. Exactly, Leia. Leia, not only is she needed for CLS, but her rework made her, I mean, she's... incredible. She's still in, in the <laughs> top 30 of my arena shot yeah. because she hits like a truck. And she's hard to fight. She's exactly. hard to play against. All right, so our next one is Guild. Guild, we're going to be doing a little bit differently. Guild, guys, the most important part of this game is yeah, it's, it's important to get the characters and to get, you know, star levels and stuff. Star levels and all that stuff. But the most important part of this game was gonna make your character better than everybody else's at your and in your shard right now when you're beginning in this game is gear. Gear. You need gear. So out of the guild store, farm gear constantly. Carbontes are needed endlessly in this game. MK3 sign or hollow projectors are, you know, the bane of my existence. So having those those, you know, gear pieces are <laughs> extremely important. So definitely out of the guild store, farm gear. Yeah, and also, referring to something earlier that we mentioned, energy refreshes are so important to get your levels up because you're going to get to a point in the game where you want to put gear into characters, but you can't because you're stuck at a certain level. So again, it all just goes together what we're telling you guys. Get your levels up <laughs> and then get your gear up as well. So now Cantina. Cantina is our fourth store and what we're going to be doing here is, what do you think is going to be our first option? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Who is there a Phoenix character in Cantina? In my is there? Oh, the little astromech. Oh. A little droid that, you know, rolling around in there. Is he orange? There. He's orange and white. Yeah. BB-8. Okay, no, we're down. <laughs> that was no. <laughs> Chop, Chopper. Okay, guys. Chopper is another part of the Phoenix squad. Listen, I used him to get Thrawn. And I didn't have Sabine. But and Chopper is incredible as a tank. Especially with Hera's leadership. The fact that he's constantly regaining protection. His taunt, I mean, it all, the fact that he can remove taunt, he can remove any buff on a character, he is fantastic. I love Chopper. I love using him. Get him first. That should be your first priority. No ifs, ands, buts about it. Chopper. As a Sabine owner, I don't have Chopper, like, I don't use him. I can say 
Chopper is the better option to use in the Thrawn event, and Chopper is also the better option early in game when you need to get through Galactic War because he adds a the protection, a survivability yeah. to Phoenix that Sabine doesn't. Sabine adds a damage to Phoenix. Yeah. So you gotta pick what you wanna go with. They're both great options, but in Cantina, you need to be farming Chopper. 100%. Second uh, on that list is Boba. Boba Fett is, he's a scoundrel, you know, he's, um, you know, he's, he's just a fantastic character in this game still to date, you know, his, his, what is it, his executability? Yeah. I mean, it can one shot, it can do over like, what is, we've seen 80,000 damage, I mean, he hits like, he hits ridiculously hard. So he's another character that's really, really good. Qui-Gon Jinn. Qui-Gon Jinn probably in this game is probably the third or fourth best Jedi. He's one of the best Still Jedi. to this date. He is the best Jedi leader yes. currently in this game, so... I would say that you have to be farming Qui-Gon. He's fantastic for Rancor as well. He removes turn meter. He's one of the guys that I farmed first out of Cantina as well. And, I mean, I loved him. For a long time, I did use him in my squad arena as well when I first started out in the game. And he's a fantastic character. He calls assists. He can remove buffs. He's just an overall good character. He is. And the last is First Order Officer. This is an option. This is an option. This is for later in the game. This is for progress. later in the game. That's why we have, you know, a list. This is the fourth out of the three. You should be farming the other three first. And hopefully by the time you have those three of seven stars, you'll be high enough level where First Order Officer makes a lot of sense. Yes. He is needed, again, for BB-8, and he is needed for the, the mod the challenges. Mod challenges. He, that's what he's needed as well, so he's another good character to be going after. Um, shipments, guys, 100% shipments. Every piece of gear that you can buy for credits should be bought. All the way at the bottom. Every All time the bottom. it refreshes, you scroll to the bottom, there's... Things you can buy for credits, like CNR holo, holo projectors and important gear pieces, especially early on in the game, you need to be buying those every single refresh. Every single Set time. Set an alarm every on your phone single. or something like that. But you're going to be needing buy those. Buy it. Yes. That's how it should go every single time, guys. Don't worry. Anything that has crystals, that's not your focus until you're later on in the game. You should not. And I still don't even buy characters out of there because it just doesn't make a lot of sense. It's not it's cost not effective. Yes. You should be only doing crystals for refreshes and you should be only in that store buying the gear that costs credits and then fleet this is tough um you know we we made the mistake i will say that for sure when we first when we first unlocked fleet of going straight off to characters there is only two characters out of fleet that you should be farming immediately besides ships ships are the most important ships are what's going to get you zetas which zetas make your god your, make your characters from you know good to gods so the ships should be your first priority, but right after them, the only two characters I would tell you to farm is Shirut Imwe, because he's fantastic. Still to this day, probably one of the best cleansers in the game. He's just amazing, and he hits hard as heck. I used him for the longest time. And Darth Vader. Darth Vader is an easy farm out of here. He's not... Right now, he's not the most viable of characters, but he will be getting reworked rework soon, and he's just a character that everybody wants. You always want to have Vader. His ship is fantastic. So definitely those two characters should be the only ones out of all the characters that you see there that you should be farming. Everything else should go straight to fleet. Vader is great for Rancor and he has his place in the AAT as well. But there's also a third character you're forgetting that you could farm in fleet. But let us stress, you should start with ships when you get to fleet. It's very important. If you could climb up the arena in your fleet, you can get crystal payouts. Remember that. We didn't have that. There was no incentive for that when we started. But if you can reach the top of your shard if you just go straight for ships right away that's going to be extremely valuable to you um the amount of fleet currency you get you want to be at least in the top 200 to be getting a decent amount of fleet currency to get zetas or carriages or ships whatever you're doing in fleet and there's another character it's ezra bridger ezra bridger happens to be in the fleet if you have him at a good enough star when you get to to fleet then maybe you don't have to farm him but if you want to expedite your farming of ezra bridger because you've been on hera for so long or you've already moved to Old Ben and he's stuck at 5 and you want to get him to 7, he's also an option in there, a really good option that you can farm in the fleet store. I promise you guys that a lot of people are like me and Exum over here in the sense that we looked at ships and it wasn't exciting. It was. Ships is very stale in this game still to this date. It's been around for over a year and a half and it's you know it's still a stale part of this game. It's not fun. I, most of the time I don't even play this, the arena because I just it doesn't excite me. But if you can get a leg up on everybody else that's thinking that same thing, those crystal payouts, if you can get those payouts, guys, that's that's phenomenal. You will be so far ahead of everybody else, especially in the currency that can you can end up later on having so much currency, you can end up buying Zetas to expedite your process. So it's definitely farm ships first. And let us tell you, when you get to those challenges, 
for getting the Zetas, those Zeta challenges, all those ship challenges, they're extremely difficult. They're not as easy. It says you should have like a certain amount of star, a certain amount of ships at a certain star. Even if you have those ships at a certain star, it doesn't mean you can beat the, the thing at three stars so that you can sim it every time. No, you need to have really strong ships. So from the, if you can focus on them from the beginning, it'll help you in the end. Exactly. And that's it for the stores. Okay. So let's get to the next question, which is easy to play farmable characters. Okay. So easy to play farmable characters as in light side and dark side. Yeah, we're going to use the notes for this one. Yeah. So number one in the light side, you should be farming first order Stormtrooper. Reason is he only has two nodes to farm in this entire game. You're going to need him for BB-8. He's an extremely difficult farm. If you could get a head start on that right away, you'll be thanking us later. Guys, I cannot tell you how many people, especially in our guild right now, that haven't been able to get um, BB-8 the two times that he's shown up because they don't have first order stormtrooper because they didn't start farming and because of how difficult to farm he is guys he's only two nodes he's only two nodes in that you can do it quick get it done fast in the first three and make sure that you can start getting a leg up on him you can still farm everybody else that he's about to talk about but get those out for him immediately get them out first so that you can build him up fast he's also a very good tank very oh, he's good a very tank good tank in the, in the beginning of the game in mid game and end game you can throw him in on hybrid teams if you want. He's a great tank. He has a counter chance. He gives defense up, and is and he taunts. Um, number two, Tebow. <laughs> Tebow, you can farm in both light side and dark side. Uh, we're focusing on light side right now, but farm Tebow because he will help you in the raids. If you can get higher scores in the raids before everybody else can, you're gonna be getting better payouts from from currency. Uh, maybe you're lucky with the gear, uh, but Tebow is a good farm for that. Uh, number three in the light side, Ray. Ray is a great attacker. You're gonna need her for um, which event is it? <laughs> Ray. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. You're gonna need Ray for Ray Jedi <laughs> training. So you're gonna need to farm her. So start farming her already. She's a great attacker that you can use, and she's just a great character. And number four is Resistance Trooper. Mm -hmm. Resistance Trooper. If you want to build a Resistance team towards the end, for the Resistance team to work, you need Resistance Trooper. So later on in the game, he's fantastic. He's gonna help you extremely in the HAAT. So he's just a great character to have. Exactly, especially for the raids. Exactly. So like we're saying, he's number four, so he's optional. He's not an easy character to farm, so start farming him now. Now we're going to dark side. Number one in the dark side. Is there um, is there Phoenix characters that you could farm in the dark side? I believe there is. I believe it's a chick. She got purple hair. Purple hair, kind of short. Yeah. Kind of good looking. Sabine. Mandalorian. Number one character to farm on Dark Side is Sabine. Okay? Sabine. Um, again, Phoenix. Phoenix, Phoenix, Phoenix. <laughs> Get that through your head. Please. The only two nodes that he's available. So, Well, he's available in a 20 energy node, but, but you gotta be like, like level 82 to get yeah. there. <laughs> so yeah. you got time before So that. he's technically not available. <laughs> <laughs> so number two, Sorcerer Storm Stormtrooper, start farming him now. Please. Number three, Tebow. He can be farmed on light side and dark side. We already gave you the reasons why. Farm him. And number four, Boba. You can expedite your Boba farm from Cantina with farming him in the dark side nodes. Number five, best beginner faction team. Definitely 100%. Phoenix. Phoenix. It is Phoenix. You guessed it. You're correct. Please. Guys, please. Please, we cannot stress it enough. Pick five. Pick five. Whichever five you want, as long as it can contain Ezra. Hera and Zeb. You and can Kanan. do and Kanan. You can do Chopper or, or you Sabine. can do Sabine. Whichever one you want. I prefer Chopper, but you can do Sabine. She's a great damage dealer and she's got a really great Zeta later on in the game. But for beginner characters, the best thing you can do is farm Phoenix, guys. It's gonna help you tremendously. Our friend right now has his Phoenix team in the top. I think it's the top. He's in the top 500 arena and he's been playing for three, two, two and a half weeks now. He's been climbing. He's been climbing it, it, tremendously just because he has such a survivable team. Guys, it's, it's paramount that you farm Phoenix. They're going to be fantastic later on in the game because you get their ships are going to be necessary. So you need them for definitely Thrawn. Take them. You need them for Thrawn. Exactly. The best thing about Phoenix is how you could use them for so many things in this game. There Guys, so many things. You they're Rebels them. and they're Phoenix. That means you're getting Emperor Palpatine, his legendary event. You're getting Thrawn, his legendary event. And you're being, you're just climbing an arena 
and you're getting better ships to get the Chimera, which is Thrawn's ship, which is the best capital ship in the game. Yes. So and you're beating Galactic War. You're beating Galactic guys. They're a hundred percent the best things you could be farming right now. The a hundred percent. They might not be the most exciting, but if you're trying to be the best in this game, you're trying to climb and you're trying to do great in this game. Phoenix. Phoenix. The fact that you can kill two birds with one stone with two legendary events with one faction is incredible. Guys, Palpatine, he might not be the best right now, but he's going to get a rework very soon. I promise you that. He will get a rework very soon, which will make him one of the best. Thrawn is he's one of the best. top five best player in the game. Immediate. If you can get him within the first two to three months of playing this game, you win. Yes. That's it. You will be <laughs> in the top of your arena. You'll be in the top 50. You'll be getting 150 crystals every refresh. Guys, Paramount, Phoenix, 100%. End of discussion. All right, so our next question. How to do better in raids? This is something that was really important to me when I first started out. And to be honest with you, probably wasn't a good idea. Yeah, we, um, <laughs> so when we first started out, we started farming for Rancor. Um, we went after Rancor really hard. But what you don't know when you're starting out <laughs> the game is how easy Rancor is. When we first started out, there was only a certain amount of teams that could beat the Rancor. Nowadays, you could beat the Rancor with just about anything you could <laughs> put any composition together pretty much as many of them and you can solo the rancor but what happens is you join guilds which is very important you need to join a guild as soon as it becomes available and join a guild that fits your playing style guys because you can join a guild and they don't play they don't they don't launch raids they don't care or you can join one that's got a, a tremendous galactic power but they've been inactive for the past six months so make sure that you're joining a guild you can search them now Make sure that they fit your playing style, your playing needs, and what you're looking to get to, and join that guild. Okay. Agreed. What he just said is extremely true. You want, if you're a competitive player, you want to be in a competitive guild. If you're a slack having fun player, be in a slack having fun player guild, because if not, you're going to get kicked out. So, again, you don't understand how easy it is to beat these raids. If you're in a strong guild, they can solo it for you, they can beat it for you. The Rancor, you get to a point where you have damage caps where we can only do 500k per uh, rancor thing that's it becomes actually extremely difficult because we have like 15 <laughs> different players that can do 500k on their own so rancor do not focus on rancor if you're really interested in focusing on the raids what you're going to focus on is aat and more specifically the haat which means you need to get all your characters to seven stars now what we have we have to know about the HAAT or the AAT is that there's four phases. There's phase one, there's phase two, phase three, and phase four. In phase one, Jedi. This is completely different to the Rancor. Yes. The Rancor you can get through with one team. Yes. And in, in the HAAT, in AAT you no. need four different team compositions. Now, we're not asking you guys or telling you guys to spread yourself thin and create four different teams. But luckily, we have told you guys a faction that actually takes care of two phases. <laughs> Not even, all four of them. <laughs> Let me tell you why. They take care of phase one based on all the characters we've told you to farm and just uh, the, the Phoenix faction as well. You can have four Jedi already <laughs> for phase one if you farmed all the characters we told you. We've told you Ezra, Kanan, Qui-Gon, and Old Ben. Throw in another character, do your damage. <laughs> You're already ahead of somebody else. Or you don't want to use them for phase one because phase one is really hard. You're in phase two. You want a rebel team? Oh wait, Phoenix is rebel. <laughs> so you can use Phoenix in phase two. Phase three. Phase three is known as the Thrawn phase because you, if you have a Thrawn team, then you can get through phase three, which is probably the hardest phase in all of the HAAT. But what faction is it that you need to get the Thrawn, Nick? <sighs> hmm. It's Phoenix. <laughs> Phoenix can get you Thrawn. So Phoenix works towards phase three. And then phase four is again another Rebels one. And Phoenix is a Rebels faction. If you actually love Phoenix, I want to go all the way with them. When you get to Zetas, if you Zeta a Phoenix team, you're going to be doing really well in phase four of the HAAT. Just to let you guys know. And that's the advice we have towards the raids. The thing is, Focus guys, on HAAT. the biggest thing with raids... And I'm going to be totally honest with you. When I first started playing, I really went after my raid teams for Rancor. Guys, to be totally honest with you, and this is my best advice to these two guys who asked this question in the first place. In re don't farm for Rancor. Just don't do it. It's not, it's not, it just doesn't make sense to do it at all. You're going to have guys that, you know, in your guild, they're going to be able to solo it themselves. So you're going to get the payouts. You're going to do it. You can have 
with all these other you know team comps we've given you you're going to be doing a good amount of damage you're going to be doing a lot of damage to get higher gear to get higher you know currency stuff like that but to to say that you should only be farming four um raids it's just not it doesn't make sense you have so many other things in this game the worst thing you can do is spread yourself out too thin in this game so stick to the guide that we've given you guys don't worry so much about raids they will come the damage in raids your place in raids it will come with the other characters that you get by getting phoenix when you get thrown you're automatically gonna go up just because you have thrown Absolutely. in your raids so that's all it is guys is don't i wouldn't focus too much on on farming for raids now number seven Specific teams for specific points in the game. So we've divided this into three different categories in the points of the game. You have the beginning, which is levels 1 through 60. We consider mid game to be level 60 through 80. And we consider late game to be 80 through 85. So we have different teams spread out for each. Yeah, uh, so you, the beginning. The reason we have the beginning as 1 through 60 is you're going to get to level 60 within the first month and like a week of playing this game. I mean, it goes super fast. Right when you get to 60, that's when it all goes downhill. It takes a lot longer to level up and stuff like that. So, okay. So, <laughs> 1 through 60, beginning. Guess who it is? Sorry. Sorry. Once again, Phoenix. <laughs> Phoenix, guys, best team for the beginning of the game. It's been said enough. I'm not going to harp on it anymore. Rebels is the second option. You don't want to build a Phoenix team. Phoenix team, even though you stressed it so much yeah. in this game. <laughs> if you don't want to do it, <laughs> go after Rebels. Rebels I feel so are... bad even saying that. I know, because like we harped on it so much. You have to <laughs> Rebels are really good in this game, guys, still to this day. So any Rebel team will be fantastic for you. Mid is 60 to 80. You should be focusing on resistance. Let me explain why you should be focusing on resistance. Now that you're level 60, you've unlocked Fleet. When you unlock Fleet, you unlock the possibility of Zetas. That's what makes Finn so incredible. And that's what takes resistance to a whole other level. Especially in the raids. Exactly. Now, we keep harping on Finn and stuff like that. We are aware that there is this new girl that has taken over resistance, and that is Ray Jedi Training. We, we own her. <laughs> but <laughs> she owners of Jay, Ray Jedi Training. <laughs> but she is such a late-game player that you shouldn't be worrying about her. Finn, for now. Fantastic option, guys. They are the best offensive team in the game. Resistance, 100%. Empire. Empire is another great team for one thing only right now. R2. 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 Top three, best player in the game, still to this day. That little astromech droid is absolutely incredible. It's ridiculous. You need Empire to unlock him, so you should be going out to R2. So he's a good, yeah, when you're in the mid-level ranges, you should be starting to focus on Empire teams. You'll probably, guess what, already have two if you listen to what we told you, because you're going to be getting uh, a top team and Thrawn. And if so, you've been listening and you've been doing your achievements to level up as fast as possible, yeah. thing, you'll, have, <laughs> you'll have Palpatine, Thrawn, and Vader, you'll be very close to Vader if you've been doing your achievements. Next team that you can start kind of working on after those two, those two are very important first, is First Order. First Order is great for, you know, like we mentioned earlier on in the game, they're good, you need them for mod challenges. They're the future of this game, just like Resistance. First Order is the future dark side of this, this game, so you should be focusing on First Order as well. And they get buffs in Territory Wars, so if that's they do something indeed. that you want to be doing later in the game, being really good at, First Order and Resistance are both great teams to use for Territory Wars. All right, next, late game, 80 to 85, you should be worrying solely really based on the meta. On the meta characters. Meta characters is a word that is used to describe the teams that are taking over your arena shard. The teams that are dominating an arena all across every arena shard. Those are the, the best characters for the longest time. It was CLS, Thrawn, Nihilus, um, R2, Nihilus, General Kenobi. General Kenobi, you know, those are the meta teams, the meta comps that just, they're so good in Arena. You should be focusing on that. And getting them. So if by this point you haven't unlocked BB-8 or R2 or Thrawn or any of these, you should be doing what it takes have to, get to be them. doing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. So that's, that's extremely important, guys. You should be constantly in this game, try to do something that we've really tried to do and we've actually done it now, which is why only a year playing in this game, we're in the top 20 of Arena as free-to-play players. Yeah. Predict the, the meta. Yeah. You predict the future of the game. We knew that First Order and Resistance was where the game was going. Yes, CLS is incredible. We didn't get him the first time around. He took over Arena. It pushed us to the 50 to 100 for the longest time because we didn't have him. Guys, try to predict where the game is going. If you can predict where the game is going, you can be ahead of the curve in the meta and you can be ahead of everybody else. We have Ray Jedi training. 
And that is why we finished so much higher than a bunch of people in this game. All right, so number eight, the fastest way to level up in this game. I feel like we've answered this already, but the fastest way to level up is doing your achievements and energy refreshes. Please do that, get to 85 as quickly as you can, and it opens up a completely different game for you. Like we said, there's like one through 60 is the beginning. Once you get to 60, it's a different game. Then from 60 to 80 and 85, it's a completely different game. Guys, again, the most important thing here is crystals. You should be using your crystals on refreshes. Refreshes are what's gonna help you level up the fastest in this game. It helps you get XP. That with achievements go hand in hand. The faster you get achievements, the more achievements you get, you get XP for them. The faster you level up, the more XP you get for that. The higher you get in levels, the faster you get higher in levels, the more you can do in the game. So 100%, those crystals should be going to refreshes to be able to get you to level up faster. Yes. Number nine, the best ships for arena. Now, number 10 is what ships are necessary for getting other things. We're gonna combine these two because really they kind of go hand in hand. So for nine and 10, you should be focusing on first two ships, same faction we have said over and over, the Phantom and the Ghost. Those are the, the Phoenix two ships. Phoenix ships. You need them to get the Chimera. The Chimera is the best capital ship. It's Thrawn's capital ship in the game. And if you've been getting the characters for the first 60 levels, you should already have Thrawn so you can lock his capital ship perfectly fine. So you should be doing those two. The next are Wedge and Bix. They're also needed towards Thrawn's Thrawn. ship because you need Rebels for him. So those two ships are amazing. Biggs is still one of the best ships in the game. It's the best tanking uh, ship in the game. Exactly. So it goes hand in hand with this character, which we told you guys to farm earlier in this in this video. And <laughs> lastly, guys, after Wedge and Biggs, any of the Tide Pilots. Yes. We chose this list because they're easy farms. We're not going to tell you to be farming Vader ship or or, B, or Boba Fett ship right now or the the Simtar, which is Maul ship, which are they're fantastic ships, but they're difficult farms. I mean, Phantom and Ghost aren't... They pop up easy, a lot. But they pop up a lot, and instead of spreading yourself thin, doing Scimitar, Vader, Boba, and Phantom and Ghost, just focus solely on Phantom and Ghost. Exactly. So these, these ships, most of these ships, four of these ships, three of these ships, will be showing up in your Galactic War as well. So yeah, by this point in the game, guys, when you're farming ships and fleet, you should be able to start using your Galactic War on something besides Zeb or besides Biggs. That's when you start farming ships. The ships will be popping up constantly in here. You're going to have so much currency if you're completing it, which you will be because you have Phoenix. So you definitely should be able to complete it, getting 1,200, which means you get three buys a day, plenty to get your ships. And these are ships of characters we have already been telling you to farm for quite a amount of time. Exactly. Definitely, the last thing I want to say is after you get these ships, guys, your focus should shift solely to dark side ships. Dark side ships are what is needed for Zetas. Uh, yes. The Zeta match challenge bases on your dark side ships with Tarkin as lead. So definitely, guys, you should be focusing on dark side ships. But first, get these ships so you can be competitive in arena. Exactly. The more competitive you are in your fleet arena, the, the better payouts currency. you're going to get, the more currency you're going to get, which is going to become easier for you to farm all those dark side ships, which the best ones, which is Vader, the Simtar, and Boba, they're the hardest ones to farm. So definitely you want to have the currency to be able to do that. And the reason we're telling you these ships, as opposed to just saying, go start out with your dark side ships, is because we've been telling you to farm the characters for these ships. And what's important in ship power is your characters, gear levels, and stuff like that. So again, <laughs> that's why we're telling you to focus on these ships, because your characters are already going to be geared. They're already going to be strong. It's going to make your ship strong from the, from the get-go. And you're going to be able to climb in arena, like he said. It's about being competitive in arena, so you can get those payouts better. And then from there, you'll be able to shift into dark side shifts, which you want to do as quickly as possible. But like I said, you want to keep it easy for you guys as beginner players. That's what you guys are. This is solely, you know, focusing on, on beginner players. Guys, it's more important to get the easier ships first, then focus on the harder ones. And get the ships of the characters that you already have been gearing and working with this entire time. All right. And lastly, how to get mods, how when and where to use mods. resources for mods, and all that good stuff with mods. Mods are just things you can put on your characters to increase their abilities, you increase your health, your protection, your speed, all that stuff. It's important in this game. Now, me and Exum are- This is gonna be a weird <laughs> answer because everybody harps on how important it is to get mods. This is a weird answer, but we have, we've allocated our resources. We, we wanted to establish ourselves in other parts of the game and, and really focus on other things first. Guys, <laughs> we've been playing this game for a year <laughs> and I can promise you, I just started. 
allocating Cantina energy towards mods. I just finished the mod challenges probably three weeks ago and I've just started allocating resources there. Why? There's a mod store. If there was a mod that I really liked, I was going to buy it out of there with credits. Never crystals, with credits. But I did not use Cantina energy for mods. I have I, never farmed mods. Guys, either. you're not you're not guaranteed to get a great mod. A great mod is something that has a speed secondary. Everybody harps on speed, 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 speed. You're not guaranteed to get that by simming it. So to me, it was better to go after characters that are necessary right now in the game to help me get up there than to go after mods that I'm, I'm probably not even going to get. So why not wait for it to come out of the store, buy some ones here and there that are going to help the certain characters I'm using, which are my arena team. And that's what we've done, and, and, and it's paid dividends. So yes. I would suggest you do the same. Be picky with your mods. The best way to farm mods that we have found is, is through the mod store, like he said. I haven't farmed mods. I have barely farmed mods recently, and I didn't like the results I was getting, so I, I left them, and I started farming a character during the campaign. Very picky. What you're looking for is, like he said, speed secondaries, and also, if you can find an, a speed arrow from three stars and up, they're extremely helpful. Always stock up on those, because you'll be able to throw them on different characters that you'll be using in different areas of the game. Purple and gold are the best ones, but don't see a blue one and a green one and not check it out. You never know what they have. It's the best way to know you're getting good mods. Checking them out, seeing what kind of mod sets they're in, what type of mod it is, which area it goes. Do your research. We're not giving you a mod guide right now. We're just telling you, you don't have to allocate two uh, mod challenges and all that stuff because it's very difficult. You have to farm different factions to be able to even complete these mod challenges. So... And it takes away from, from character farming, yeah. which is not what you want to do right now. So you want to make sure just you're picky and you're always checking the the mod shipments. You can spread yourself too thin, which is the worst thing you can do in this game, guys. So make sure that you're on task. Please listen to what we, we've told you. Phoenix, Phoenix, Phoenix. We know you guys have heard it enough. You probably tuned out after the first time we've said it. But just, guys, trust that that is the best thing you can do right now as, as a beginning player. So, guys, this is our, our, our question. Can, can I say one more thing? Oh, please, go ahead. There's a very good, very good thing that can help you out there. A very good resource. SWGOH.GG. It's a very good resource. What you should be doing is if you see characters that you're going to be using long term, you need to go and you need to look at their gear list and you need to plan ahead. You need to farm the gears that you might not need right now, but you might need in the future because the higher gear level, like we said, the better you'll be. So, Save your gear. Don't just be putting it anywhere. The SWGOH is a great website that you can use to strategically attack how you're going to be spending your gear, which is very important. Yeah. So, guys. It's the last tip we got you. Exactly. You guys. So, you know, that's it. As beginning players, guys, we understand your pain. We understand that it can be tough. We all make mistakes in this game. You know, you get, you fall in love with the character and you just want him and it ends up not being the best thing. Darth, Darth Sidious in my case, you know. So, just hopefully you guys take what we've told you and, and hopefully it helps you guys out. And, you know, guys, please comment in the section below. Tell us what you think about our list. Tell us what you think about the questions that we were able to ask. If you have better advice for them than we did, please leave it in the comment section. These, guys, we'll will be checking. Guys, yeah, to These guys will be checking the comments. They'll be reading through to see if there's a better, if you guys have better ideas than we did. Yeah. You know. So, we we'll hope this helps you out, guys. Yeah, thanks for checking out the video. This was a good time. Yeah. We'll see you on the next one. Please like, subscribe, turn on notifications for future videos. <laughs> Bye. Take care. <laughs> yeah, guys, so we haven't been posting a lot this week. We just started school, so we just want to let you guys know we're trying to get our schedule back together, and we should start posting a lot more soon. Over, Anakin. I have the high ground. You underestimate my power. Don't try it. High ground. You were supposed to destroy the Sith, not join them. High ground. I loved you. High ground. <laughs> high ground. It's not the high ground way. I mean, the Jedi way. You know what I'm saying. I'm saying I've beaten you, and I'm on the high ground, so. High ground. <laughs>